the future. We want the future. And we know when it's going to get here because we're going to have teleportation, streamlined automobiles, and law enforcement cyborgs. Thank you for not smoking. But if we're here to learn physics, what we're really waiting for are the weapons. Sparkling, crackling, a luxurious visual feast of light. Especially lasers. But is any of this really the way it's going to be? Unfortunately, probably not. Physics has its own rules, even about futuristic violent destruction. And if you've really been counting on what we've been promised, you're likely in for a little bit of disappointment. And there's no better demonstration of this than the laser. Laser is an acronym for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. And light is exactly what we get. Orange light, blue light, yellow light, green light. Does this cornucopia of colors have any rational purpose, or is it all just for show? As it turns out, color is very important. If you need wanton destruction, certain colors simply are better than others. Every photon of light has its own unique energy. And the formula for that energy is extraordinarily simple. The energy of light is given by E is equal to H times F. H is a constant, Planck's constant, and it's always the same. What matters is frequency, F. You can think of frequency as like waves per second, and it is different for every single color. Colors close to red have large, ponderous wavelengths, making them fat and slow. But colors like blue have skinny wavelengths. There's more of them per second of space. They're faster with more tightly packed energy. So in matters of life and death, red is weak compared to the stronger green. Orange is weak, easily overpowered by the much stronger blue. So if you want the strongest color of all, you simply look to the end of the rainbow. Purple! So is that it? Not exactly. Purple and every other color we can see is just one tiny sliver of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Just because you can't see the rest of it doesn't mean it's not there. So lower and fatter than even red are radio waves and microwaves. And faster and more powerful than even purple are X-rays and gamma rays. Which we can't see. The most powerful lasers of all aren't going to be any colors. They're going to be either X-rays or gamma, which we can't see. Therein lies the disappointment. Our coveted space battles, into which we've poured all of our hope and expectation. We already knew that in outer space, they'd be totally silent. Now, we just found out that they're going to be totally invisible as well. So where does this leave us? If we want colorful, exciting starship destruction, what are we to do? Well, lasers aren't everything that television has promised us. After all, if you can see them, then they're not lasers. So what are they? Well, if television doesn't know, then you can always open a book. In the Robert Heinlein novel, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, you have a colony of moon humans who decide to declare independence. Now, instead of wasting time with an army that they don't have, they hit upon the idea of throwing asteroids at the Earth until the Earth finally surrenders. This is the power of kinetic energy, and I assure you, you are infinitely familiar with it. Ah! Kinetic energy weapons are the basis for virtually every killing device we've invented for the last 5,000 years. As such, we tend to exclude them from sci-fi, because after all, they're ordinary. But let's not gorge ourselves on overconfidence. While you're fooling around with antimatter, charged particles, and force shields, you may tend to forget that a rock thrown at your head 
still hurts. Take that. Kinetic energy does not deal with light, but with mass. Any mass that you can give a velocity. This simplicity is why it's so easy to fight wars with it. Velocity is easy. And the frantic race of our civilization to make weapons that push mass faster and faster and faster is probably what is at the heart of our gosh darn impatience to finally invent lasers. But we can now do better than lasers. Don't underestimate mass. Any word about the attack? Just rumors. They say the Centauri is using mass drivers. I can't believe they'd resort to planetary bombardment. The power of solid mass to inflict damage depends only upon the speed in which you can throw it. With the formula mass velocity squared, that damage increases faster than you think. We judge kinetic energy only by the minuscule speeds we've been able to produce so far. A bullet goes maybe 200 meters per second, an artillery shell maybe 1500 meters per second, but in terms of outer space, that's not really very fast at all. If in the future our energy is limited only by our speed, then go ahead and make it as fast as you can. As fast as you can in our universe is the speed of light. If you push matter that fast, what you've done is to invent a brand new weapon, the particle beam. And this is exactly what we've been waiting for. A particle beam is not what television says, but it is exactly what it means. Since it has mass, you can see it. Since it has energy, you can feel it. And it certainly has no care at all about what color it is for any particle beam will be decidedly more powerful than any laser. How powerful? In physics, the speed of light is so important it gets its very own abbreviation, the letter C. And when things start moving that fast, fine stuff starts to happen. For example, the formula for kinetic energy, one-half mass velocity squared, or one-half mv squared. When that starts going the speed of light, it starts to look remarkably like this other physics equation, E is equal to mc squared. And that is nothing less than the formula for the nuclear bomb! Check it out. Independently targeting particle beam failings. What? For a half a city with this puppy. As powerful as our most advanced weapons are going to be, it's fascinating how we can still trace their physics right back to some of our most ancient. It gives us a unique opportunity to use physics as a history lesson. If an equation works, keep using it. We underestimate ourselves. And that is a character flaw. Lasers, nukes, and particle beams do not need science fiction. We understand their equations and we can build them right now. We don't know how good the physics we already have already is. We've landed on the moon, we've landed our probes on other planets, we've split the atom and united the entire world with the internet. We're living in a golden age of technology right now. But we hyperfixate on technology so fictitious it hasn't even been invented yet, yet we somehow swear we can't live without. We say we need cybernetic rocket cycles. We say we need killer robots. We say we need electro death rays. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Don't obsess over what you don't have. Let the easy physics do its job. Remember, the rock still hurts.